Thank you for all being here. That's fantastic. I'm going to try and speak slowly. But I'm sorry, I get excited, you know, and then anyhow, let, let's try. So um, I just want to tell you a little bit about Calabra. Many of you uh, know of us. Um, the parent company has 140 staff. Uh, it's quite a mature company, arguably the leading open source consultancy in the world. And it's the parent company of Calabra Productivity, uh, which I guess is, is the uh, LibreOffice related bit. Uh, we came out of SUSE in 2013, now eight years, just slightly over eight years old, around 32 staff. And we're fully focused on office, office pieces. And of course, LibreOffice is a huge part of that. And the LibreOffice technology uh, underpins everything we do uh, there. And so, you know, I think a very positive uh, way of looking at it. And thanks, thanks, Atalo, uh, for, for building that whole uh, model and, and framing and uh, approach to market. I think that's really, really cool. So Calibre's mission, well, yes, make open source rock. So uh, hopefully we have a great uh, alignment there with TDF's mission. Um, and just to reiterate that, this is really our raison d'etre. It's, it's why we're here. Uh, it's the goal of our shareholders. So what does that mean? Well, if we're not doing that, then we're, we, we're failing to some degree. So how do we do it? We take uh, the support that our uh, people give us, our partners, our customers, and so on, and reinvest that into uh, Floss software everywhere. Um, all our code is open. Obviously, we have to make money to pay our salaries and to reinvest and so on. But uh, broadly, we're in you know, it's, it's, the goal is making open source rock. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're not for sale. Uh, we're not a, you know, a, a startup that appears and disappears having done something of questionable value and, 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 and changes uh, radically. And so we're really quite static in terms of, uh, you know, structure, ownership, uh, and so on. We, we're here for the long run uh, to, to make open source succeed. And because it doesn't succeed by itself, it needs lots of effort uh, put in. Um, so the parent company does all sorts of things, and I, I just, uh, you know, a, a few things there. So, I mean, the fundamental thing that ties these together is making open source succeed in lots of new domains, uh, enabling primarily Linux to run on all kinds of semiconductor hardware, uh, doing automotive things in your car, in your, uh, you know, the medical device next to your, your bed in your hospital, uh, the, the signs you're looking at, the entertainment that's streamed through, you know, multimedia displays, uh, the plumbing that ties all this together. And, but, perhaps more importantly, making it easy for companies to do the right thing, which is to base off an open source a solution. So providing that, that consultancy service and you know, the ability to find people to solve your problem uh, quickly. And so there's, there's lots of examples there of, of, of good things we've done. Calabra's productivity subsidiary though is, is really focused on, uh, well, selling, selling things around the LibreOffice technology. So we've developed uh, Calabra Online, which is really the tip of our, our sales marketing uh, sphere. And uh, we develop that, uh, support it, maintain it, sustain it. And it's built on, of course, LibreOffice technology. Much of the uh, goodness underneath there is completely shared. And I'll talk about that later. Um, and we, we make this you know, wonderful, scalable, interoperable, collaborative editing thing in your browser. And then we provide an SLA around that uh, to keep it available inside your organization, level three support, for fixing uh, bugs, tickets, problems. Uh, we talk to our customers about where they want to go. You know, what do they want the product to do? Where should we be? going? How can we improve? And then we love to go to market via partners. So our, our preferred uh, route to market is to, you know, find great open source loving companies uh, at, in the in the world out there and to partner with them and then share the revenue uh, around, uh, you know, around the code base there, uh, with them. So they, they get a better product to give to their customers and uh, we stand behind them and, you know, uh, it, it all works well. But the most crucial piece here is uh, in ensuring that revenue goes back to actual development um, because you know it's very easy to sell services around open source whilst not contributing back and that's something that we we think is just destructive for the whole ecosystem um, we also sell collabor office which is a branded version of LibreOffice, obviously the foundation for what we do in online and we have a, a year-based versioning uh scheme and release schedule and we sell then on, on pc mac and linux uh, for that uh, but we also do bespoke consultancy and we make wacky products to help people with uh, obscure needs around the LibreOffice technology. Um, and, you know, we'll even take the risk of uh, doing prepaid uh, fixed price level three bug uh, fixes. So we go to market then through partners, OEMs and well, hosters, all, all sorts of people. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, anyone can install a Docker image and claim to be an expert, you know, um, whilst asking questions of other people and, and consuming what looks like community resource in order to, you know, try and fulfill 
uh, their needs. And we've seen a lot of it around open office. We see a lot of it around uh, Libre Office. Well, maybe less, because I think there's a more positive message about contributing there. Um, but all of our partners are essentially committed to then shipping uh, Calabra online and, and, and encouraging users to pay for it and pay a reasonable amount, massively cheaper than Microsoft, giving you amazing digital freedom, but then putting money back into actual free software development underneath. So, uh, you know, we love to work with smart people. And uh, so a lot of our partners are extremely sharp and produce uh, a key part of the deliverable here because we just do Office and we try and focus on that. So without, you know, your next cloud, your own cloud, your PyDO, your, uh, you know, Filer, your Jekki, all, all of these things, your eGroupware, we don't really have any uh, documents to edit and we don't have any credentials of users to authenticate against. So, so we rely on our partners to provide that route to market and the wrapper around uh, Collabra Online. And we have loads of them, 230 partners. Uh, if you're interested in becoming one, uh, contact me, check out our partner list if you want to find one. But in your own language near you, we should have something. And we have a nice web page you can look at, which sort of breaks down the commercials, uh, the subscriptions, and what, what we sell there and, and how it's priced. So do you? We poke at that if you care about it. But I suspect uh, more people will be interested in uh, you know, what we've done and how we've been working on improving LibreOffice technology. I very quickly screenshotted Italo's uh, slide earlier, and, and so I now have a, a, you know, the right logo in the background. Um, so I'd just like to show some of the uh, things that we've done, and we've been really pleased to contribute to uh, Core alongside the community. So uh, one of the things I'm most pleased about is that uh, you know for, for decades, we've had this rather narrow VCL API. Um, it's possible to expand the power of our rendering and to make it cleaner and to, you know, uh, quicker and so on. But there are a lot of things that can get in the way there. And so one of the things that I've been uh, encouraging people to do is to invest in Skia uh, and trying to get to fewer different backends rendering stuff. Um, so uh, with AMD, we've done some great work there to get accelerated Vulkan rendering uh, on Windows uh, via Skia. Sadly, we still need the GDI rendering for print, which is a tragedy. Hopefully, hopefully we can come up with a solution there. Um, in recent times, Lubosch has been working uh, on uh, Skia support for Mac, uh, accelerated with the Metal uh, backend there, so we can then use a single API for Mac and Windows. Um, of course, it runs on Linux as well, but of course, the Cairo API is, you know, it's actually really very capable modern uh, rendering API as well. It's not the default there yet. And we've ripped out the OpenGL stuff that used to be there, and uh, I think we're shipping that in, in LibreOffice 7.7.2. So uh, really thanks to, well, AMD, of course, but also to all of the LibreOffice vanilla Mac buyers who actually bought uh, LibreOffice on, on Mac. Uh, got, you know, they bought the convenience of having that uh, in their hand easily and updating, auto, automatically updating, and we put that back into improving the software. Uh, some other things they funded. So, you know, the buyers in the Apple App Store there are really the only serious Mac customers we have at, as, as a project. So, you know, the only real people paying for Apple uh, Mac support. Um, so anyway, the funding there really helped us. You know, we, we could buy the dev kit ahead of time. We could sign the hideous NDAs uh, with, with Apple. Um, we could uh, do this work built on Stefan's uh, work there to get the ARM64 ABI. We could patch all the dependencies. And uh, thanks to Tor for doing all of that. And we were there, you know, ready to ship it. Uh, but of course, there was some horrible bug in the App Store upload that meant we were rather late actually getting it out. Uh, it was just too big to have an x86-64 and an ARM64 binary um, at the same time. But anyway, it is there now. Uh, and it works thanks to our uh, Mac customers. So here's a debate. Maybe some of you, uh, you know, are aware that we have a board, and uh, you know, our board elections are coming up. I guess in the uh, at the end of this year, perhaps soon. And so, you know, I'd like to encourage people who like to wrestle with knotty problems uh, to, you know, to think about this. Um, so here, here, here's a question that, that our board is, is currently, you know, continuing to evaluate, reevaluate. Um, everyone agrees that we should provide LibreOffice for free as download at TDF for, for all platforms broadly. Um, but should we? actually charge for LibreOffice and app stores. Well, you know, these are DRM app stores that stop people from sharing the free software, killing one of your software freedoms. But then against that, we can charge a syntax for this, uh, using this horrible uh, route, um, which we can then spend. Of course, some of it goes to say Apple or, or Microsoft, but that gives us cash and it gives TDF cash to improve feature function, which then hopefully drives adoption and, and, and meets our you know, development goals as well. Or uh, or the, the alternative view is should we ship it for zero dollars in the app stores uh, because our adoption goal is more important and we should be giving things for free to users uh, and that, that's more important in development. And it, it would then be better to have less income 
and less development uh, in order to get more users and more convenience for those users. So that, you know, and, and bearing in mind, of course, some part of that will come back via donations. So, you know, people will donate. We know that's a small part compared to the revenue that actually comes in when they pay for convenience because we've measured it. Um, but, you know, maybe that's a sacrifice worth having. Um, and against that, of course, then uh, convenient access in a DRM app store will then stop people coming to the website for updates. So that may cut into TDS visits and its donations that pay for the staff that, that do a lot of the work here and you know, very valuable work in, in, the, in the community. So, but, but is that worthwhile to get more adoption? Or, you know, and will those non-paying users then become future community members who will improve feature function and drive our development goals? Hard to say, right? I mean, I have my view, uh, but we need people who are willing to wrestle with these problems and read both sides of these and understand them and, and you know, engage. So let me encourage you, if, you're, if you've got a passion for dealing with knotty, difficult problems, uh, you know, to stand uh, or, you know, consider standing for, for the board uh, and, and wrestling with us uh, with those. So anyway, let me talk about some of the other things we've done sort of outside the sphere of the, the App Store uh, revenue there and, and feeding that back into improving the Mac. So uh, Itali talked winsomely about the LibreOffice technology. It's used in all sorts of places, many of them you can't see, but one popular use is for indexing or converting documents. Um, so we're really thrilled with NLNet to have been able to uh, implement this uh, indexing exporter that, that generates not just a text output of the document, but also um, where that text is in the document so that we can then render thumbnails of it and provide results that look pretty. Um, so, so you can see you know, where, which shape or which, which paragraph uh, in its context the thing was in, rather than sort of converting to HTML and losing uh, so much richness as part of that. So that's, that's kind of a cool new feature. Hopefully will drive adoption. One of the things I'm most pleased about is, well, I, I have a passion for improving performance. And, uh, you know, many uh, regression and breakage is down to this that we've, we've subsequently fixed. But either way, having an economic incentive to optimize the software is just really cool. Um, so that we can, you know, actually people want to make it faster and better and more beautiful. And so loads of stuff came from online here in terms of caching sidebar panels, faster switching, faster dash line rendering, better image scaling. I mean, you, you can read the things here, but lots, lots of stuff. Uh, and all of that's in the core, of course. All of that improves LibreOffice for everyone. Um, and of course, lots of other uh, core optimizations, you know, faster text rendering. We want this thing to be snappy and quick and beautiful, you know, the best uh, office suite uh, for interactivity that's out there. Now, one of the funny things here was uh, uh, typing fast. So, so we get users who, who, who just like to mash the keyboard to test collaborative editing. And it turns out you can type 10 times as fast as a, as a normal uh, typer if you just do this on the keyboard, which is cool. Um, but uh, it turned out that actually the dominant cost of, of rendering that far more than anything else we saw was rendering this absolutely beautiful B-spline uh, subdivided into you know, two pixels high. It's a, it, with all of these control points and 90% or so of our CPU time rendering a, you know, in a document with this in it was just rendering those red squiggles, uh, which is kind of silly. And actually, when you see a large calc spreadsheet with misspelled strings in it, you know, that's, that's another cost that's happening there and has now been fixed, uh, contributed back. Uh, so, so great for everyone. Um, X-Ray. Uh, so, so it's really important that people understand how their documents work, particularly when they're scripting or writing, uh, writing things around uh, the office suite. And so uh, we, we really uh, were thrilled to have uh, the TDF donors, uh, thanks to the board and the executive for getting, getting tendering fixed, um, fund building an X-Ray-like document inspection tool into LibreOffice 7.2 so that you can learn the UNO API, you can see your, how your document is structured, and you can easily write and debug and, and see what's going on, which is just, just, just fantastic. And uh, you, know, you can see all of the properties then of, of your, your Office suite. It's not reveal codes, uh, which is the word perfect uh, desire, but it's, you know, it's pretty nice to be able to see absolutely everything that's, that's going on there that is exposed through the API. And uh, yeah, just thank, thanks to being able to do that. That's great. Uh, what else? So user experience. So there's a whole load of little tweaks, particularly improving things in the sidebar. You'll see, you know, this font work sidebar panel there. And uh, much of that is driven by the desire to have these mobile, um, mobile panels there because we wrap the sidebar in clever ways uh, to provide our mobile uh, user, one user experience, one-handed uh, user experience. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else? So uh, yeah, style preview rendering, just to make it easier to select, you know, the style that you want. Uh, really, really nice to be able to see, see what it's going to look like. Um, great to be able to contribute that and, of course, shared with uh, online. Um, one of the nice things about working at Collabora, I hope, is uh, Hack Week projects. So uh, from time to time, 
uh, you know, when the customer craziness is uh, not as bad as it is normally, or, uh, you know, we've just managed to get a big release out and, you know, people have been working really hard. We just love to give people a hack week and say, you know, go and work on anything you like in LibreOffice, uh, you know, just, just do something cool. And so uh, this is just an example of uh, Tomas or Quickie's hack, hack Week project uh, to provide a heads-up display to allow you to rapidly search for commands uh, to do the thing you want to do, but you can't find the uh, the toolbar button or the you know the icon or, or whatever it is that does that. And that's kind of cool. Just try try that with Shift Escape in in your LibreOffice. Other things we love to well you know we we do a whole lot of work on interoperability. We have wonderful interoperability. LibreOffice's interoperability is, is better than any other implementation out there outside of Microsoft, let, let's say, um, you know, and it has an incredible history of, of you know, uh, unwinding and disentangling horrors uh, in, in the file formats we have to work with there. Um, but, you know, there's always something more. So, so this is a great, uh, great fix by actually, uh, uh, I think, um, Sarpa um, to improve how headers and footers round trip to PPTX. Uh, here's some work from Mike Kagansky, I think, on multi-column uh, text layout and impress. Uh, something really, really cool there. Um, thanks to co-investment from Sousa. This is a really big problem, but Sousa really helped us uh, focus on that and, and, and fund part of it. Um, Mick Losh's Hack Week, uh, doing, doing bottom to top, left to right text. Uh, very important uh, if you have a box uh, that does that. Um, another customer here, so uh, Tupitak is a, is a research institution in uh, Turkey, which does lots of great things. Uh, and so Mohamed and uh, Miklos together have, have got this, this project put together to, to improve how the bibliography references work and just make them much more usable and intuitive and, and powerful, which is cool. Uh, another example here of a partnership is with Nuanoff, uh, Cornell's uh, business, uh, doing, you know, making uh, visible digi digital signatures in, in Draw so that you can see See your documents being signed and and, and uh, sign it, I guess, in, in a, an elegant way. Uh, another interoperability win is getting custom geometry and image effects. Uh, so Gusha has been uh, working hard on this, and uh, really really nice to uh, to see that and a whole load of effects going there as well that I can't can't show you. And again, thanks to uh, Sousa. Uh Cached fields. So your uh, calendars interoperate. This is one of my favorites. Um, so we have. Uh, a competitor out there with a fork of uh, LibreOffice that contributes relatively little back um, upstream and that had a feature, a, a custom proprietary feature that they would then stick a line, you know, uh, in your header to try and achieve this and, and fiddle uh, with some code. Um, we, we took a different approach to implement, you know, the, the feature properly, uh, put that in the core, add the user experience for that, make sure it interoperates uh, nicely and to get that back into LibreOffice for everyone's use. And, you know, we'd like to encourage you to use suppliers that, that contribute. So why bother sharing all these contributions? I mean, lots of people do amazing things for LibreOffice. You know, the volunteers are doing cool things out there every day. I'm sure, you know, if you're, if you're here and watching, you've done cool things for LibreOffice. Well, it's a good question. Um, some people differentiate from their competitors or some suppliers with proprietary value adds. Um, but really, we want to encourage customers to select a supplier you know, based on competence and competence proven by actual contribution. Um, we, we think that's the best way to get virtuous cycles of actually contributing and, uh, and growing a competence there. And so, you know, as, as, uh, another reason is, I guess, to, to remind people that, that as TDF wrestles, you know, it, it's wrestling at the moment to, to work out how, who pays for what and how we can make this economically sustainable. It's really helpful. Um, to remember that the customers and partners really help drive our mission. Uh, all, all, of, all of this stuff is paid for by, by customers. If we were all unemployed tomorrow, we would still probably, many of us would do things for uh, LibreOffice because we love the project, uh, but we wouldn't be able to do nearly as much as uh, we, we can do uh, with funding. Uh, speaking of which, one of the things we're thrilled about is to have uh, moved uh, Mimo now to... Uh, you know, a proper supported base now here with a, with a stack of people. And thanks to uh, all of the people in the community that have, have made the case and helped there uh, for a long time. Um, so uh, with Atos and Arua, uh, Calabra is, is thrilled to be able to, uh, well, you know, for a start, port, you know, the sort of 160-ish patches uh, to the oldest branch to make sure that this is a secure and, and safe deployment, as well as actually uh, fixing these things and shipping uh, this bespoke uh, version of LibreOffice for uh, the French ministries. So great, great to be able to do that together. I think it's another example of a, a sort of distribution or distribution of LibreOffice that, you know, is, is built on the technology and is, is, is great for all of those users. 
Um, so, hey, talk briefly about Calabra Online um, and you know some of the performance work uh, that we've done in that. I got a 30 minute talk on Friday, so I'm going to skip the slide uh, just to show you how much hard work we've done to really uh, you know zero in on performance and improve that massively. Um, some of the nice things I mentioned, the uh, bringing draw to online font work is pretty fun, uh, making making draw a useful a piece of that a product. Uh, just nice features everywhere. It's very hard with so much done in a year. And again, Core cool, cool, will have a talk on what we've done in the last year uh, to try and make that uh, you know, expand on this. There's, there's really a lot's happened. Um, another important thing that we heard was that you know more documentation was wanted to be to be open. So we've opened up our uh, much of our documentation. So there's the you know SDK there now. You can search it. There's all sorts of installation help, uh, API documentation. So it's just very easy to now. Uh, write and improve an integration and, and make that, but it's, it's very easy to write an integration anyway, but you know, we've made it uh, substantially easier there uh, by opening that up. And we're just really grateful for all of the people that have contributed code uh, who, who are not from Calabra. And of course, those who contributed translations, absolutely wonderful uh, to, to have people come and help us out, you know, in our mission to get digital sovereignty uh, back in your hands so you can control your own documents, data, workloads, network. Uh, and software. So uh, I'm not going to go on about it a lot, but we'll have a little uh, conference dedicated to that after the LibreOffice conference uh, in next next week. Um, so there you go. Eight years of Calabria productivity. Well, uh, by affiliation last year, something like uh, 4,000 commits out of 12, 13,000. Um, that's actually decreasing. So if you, if you look at the proportion of Calabria commits, it's gone down significantly since last year. Uh, which I think is a concern that some people have that Calabra was too too large. So hopefully that is starting to be uh, addressed. And uh, you know it's important that we can all uh, you know build successful businesses that really contribute uh, around uh, the LibreOffice technology and, and you know get get more 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 diversity and more people are working there. Uh, people often ask me what percentage of TDF you know like there's a whole lot of commits there, but the Document Foundation volunteers uh, and uh, donors have paid for some proportion of that. So, uh, you know, it's around 5% of our revenue this year, so far this year, and about 1% last year. So I just provide that as sort of the guidance uh, on, on that pie chart. But every 5% is welcome. It really is, uh, you know, like uh, wonderful to have a TDF as a customer. Um, other ways we serve? Well, there's a lot of places we serve. On the board, I was encouraging people to stand there earlier. Let me encourage people to stand for the membership committee. Uh, Mohamed Kara has now uh, moved on to other things, but he, he's served us on the membership committee for much of the year. Uh, on the ESC, of course, uh, funding of cash uh, donations from uh, Calabra. And well, you know, I, I think probably the biggest thing that we do is every day uh, we tell people about the LibreOffice technology. We, we tell people about the goodness of open source, of free software, how to get involved and how to, uh, you know, how to, I guess, free their systems and, and uh, get that advantage built on top of that technology base. So there's a, there's a big old sales and marketing effort there. On our team, something like 37 committers in the last 12 months to Calabria Online and also uh, the LibreOffice core. And lots of people behind the scenes. Elisa, you heard about from Italo writing, you know, creating beautiful graphics. Um, but, you know, uh, William doing sysadmin uh, for us and helping uh, with marketing. And lots of people whose names you never see in terms of finance and HR and support uh, behind the scenes. So, yeah, do, do consider joining us. Uh, we have a whole load of uh, a job, well, I say we have a whole lot of job. We have one job offer at the moment, which is for a marketing uh, manager. So we'd love to, if you have skills in marketing uh, and you'll have excellent English, um, then you know, please do look at that. But otherwise, Calabra is hiring. You know, we love to uh, have sharp people join our team uh, and deliver on all of our uh, many things we do. Here are some of the team uh, that we uh, we try to, uh, we, we'd love to be with you. Um, but, you know, things being what they are, it's hard. And here are my conclusions. So. Well, it's our mission applied. It's what we do every day. We try and make open source rock and make that LibreOffice technology rock. We want to liberate people's documents, uh, get them collaborating, uh, you know, in, in a safe and federated way uh, on their own infrastructure uh, with, with workloads and, and uh, servers that they control, networks they control, and, and get their privacy uh, back. Um, everything we do, and I, I, I've said this a lot more in previous years, so let me just labor this point a little bit. It's very easy to assume that software writes itself, uh, that, quotes the community magically does things. Um, but the community actually is made up of people, and many of those people are paid for by 
our customers and partners, whether it's our company or others around the system, uh, you know, the ecosystem, it's important that people pay for something um, because without that, we can't do what we do. Conversely, our customers and partners rock. They're awesome. We, we, you know, they make possible everything that we do. But we can't do anything without them. And of course, we can't do it without our staff too. So thank you to all the staff who've done, um, you know, extremely hard work uh, this year. And uh, the community that works alongside us, it's a privilege and a pleasure to work alongside, uh, you know, many of you. And thank you for making it fun. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's really appreciated, uh, you know, the encouragement and, and goodness that comes from seeing people jump in and, and contribute. That's, that's just great. Um, in terms of our branding, that's one of our only assets um, and, you know, drives the leads and the credit that, that funds the fund by our customers and partners. Uh, beyond that, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to sponsor the LibreOffice conference. Uh, I, you know, uh, it, it's, we're, we're really missing uh, seeing you in person. Hopefully next year, uh, we'll be able to, uh, you know, meet up and chat and, and talk about all the things uh, on your mind and, uh, you know, go deeper. So thank you so much. That's pretty much it. Um, and if there are any questions, comments, I'll be around in the, uh, the room. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Mike. Um, there is a, not a question, but it is a comment, let's say. Uh, I can't tell the name because it's, it's written in Arab and <laughs> I'm not able to read it. But the comment is in English. So <laughs> uh, I just want to say that Collabora sets a very good model. I was thinking about uh, how we can make businesses floss driven and the first org that came to my mind was Collabora. The way it does business is a big inspiration to me and I'm sure it's been an inspiration to many other people and businesses too. Thank you. That's the comment. Thank you very much. I mean, I think it's, 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 a, it's a very positive comment. I think it's probably worth saying there's a mix of, uh, there's a mix of, of views on that, but, but thank you. I mean, we, we appreciate encouragement. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing how important that is. Uh, you know, to, to me and the staff. So thank you. We're, we're trying to do the right thing. It's not. It's not easy making a business in in open source, and uh, you know, and it's a privilege to do it with the community's support. So we really appreciate your help, help doing that. All, all of you. Uh, so thank you.